It is indeed Wednesday, hump day for some, slightly hungover day for me, me and MCID out boozing into the night last night, gossiping about our favourite jump up artists. Fighting bare chested in the street as to whether or not rollers are a genre. Lots of lobsters in the chat. Just a bunch of decent, honest, God-fearing folk out for a better way of life. Out for a better quality of EQ day, man. Better quality of single origin, coffee, granule enema. Out for a better quality of communism. Better quality of late stage capitalism. Yeah, so that was hashtag, 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 hashtag with Doc001. What a fine way to start a Wednesday morning. With all of the hashtags a grown boy needs. All the hashtags you can eat. In fact, too many hashtags. Oh, they are a bit rich, those hashtags. Very, very high in fat, very high in protein. You know, this is fine for a ketogenic diet, but like I say, you can't have too many of them. Very rich, very filling, very satiating, these hashtags. Package, ah, package, ah, package. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's five minutes past ten. The date is the 30th of January, 2019, the year of the bisexual lobster. He's just out there getting it done, and why the hell not? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Mains. Steady job, a couple extra lobsters. That's all I want. If you're getting on, you're pushing 30s, love. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, 
I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy, and that's funny, and it's, it's, it's kind of cool, and it's interesting, and it's edgy, and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you, and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. The lobster patriarchy it has many of the top memes. Many of the top memes. Many of the top memes. The lobster patriarchy it has many of the top memes. And that is so true that it's almost unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes on Threshold.fm on this fine, sunny winter morning. My head is throbbing like a little rabbit's heart being chased by a cat around a small garden of a terraced house. Round and round it goes. <laughs> kind of like a, kind of like a low-key Gabba record of almost certainly Netherland origins. But it'll be fine. I've had some coffee. I've uh, top shelved half a penger. That should start kicking in any any minute. And I'll be good for the hour. I'll be good. Right, what have we got in the news today? Uh, quote unquote gypsy on the run. Arrest warrant is issued for British tourist 26 charged with fraud in New Zealand after he fails to present himself at a police station. Uh, that's our friends over in New- our Liverpudlian friends over in uh, Kiwi Town. Just in havoc. Clegg News, Nick Clegg News. Uh, Nick Clegg accused of drinking the Facebook Kool Aid as he claims the social network has stopped thousands of suicides. I don't think you're going to get too far with uh, that one, pal. Uh, Pope, on the other hand, says social media is turning people into so, uh, into social hermits. Elon Musk does a tweet. Uh, pretentious foodie mum shut down after saying uh, son, son won't be the kid's menu type. Always wanted to shut someone down, you know? Or like have a video of me destroying someone. Like high ranking destroy sobbing six year old with facts and logic. <laughs> high ranking destroys a disabled child uh, with. <laughs> destroys disabled leftist child. Oh, I don't know. Uh, boy, three, uh, found after he went missing in the woods and says he's just hanging out with bears. Good for him, man. He's just, you know, he's just out there getting it done. Uh, car number plate news. Don't know what that's all about. Eight strangest things that people are married. I want to see how many of the... I've not looked down this list yet. It'd be interesting to know how many of these we've already covered, as it seems to be quite a lot. Holograms, duvets, dead pirates, you know, all your favies. A uh, retired couple make 26 mil after breaking the lottery code. Uh, that seems like a bit of a hoop. A uh, German doctor who killed lover by sprinkling cocaine on his penis jailed for nine years. And that headline doesn't give that much away about who did the sprinkling and who or who died. It could that could be either ra- either way around. Hmm, interesting. Uh, time traveller from 2030 claims that he knows what happens to UK after Brexit. Keen to hear that one because no one fucking else does. Uh, we're going to get into Cockroach Boy and the sun thinking memes are real. Human bones in Primark. Uh, sex robots, obviously. Uh, and we will cover the St. Paul Slapper as I know that you're all um, keen to hear about him. He's a, he's a cheeky renegade slapster. What have we got in terms of sheep throwers? New bop beer. I'll play that culture shock again. Chrissy Chris. Might play that um, culprit remix of Ring Shifter. Because, I mean, it will shift your ring. It's, you, know, you know that, yeah? You, you had to do it to him. Uh, right, look, let's just let, let's get into these, um, these uh, Liverpudlians. Quote, unquote, gypsy on the run. Arrest warrant is issued for a British tourist, 26, charged with fraud in New Zealand after he fails to present himself at the police station. Group of British travellers caused chaos in New Zealand for weeks. On the 13th of January, group was allegedly filmed leaving rubbish on a beach. Woo-hoo, they are out of control. 26-year-old man was charged with assault with a weapon on the same day. He skipped court on Tuesday and a warrant has been issued for his arrest. Uh, the unknown man is charged with assault and reckless driving at a beach. And his family is accused of trashing and with dishonestly using a document. I wonder what that means. 
the 26 year old was supposed uh, supposed to face Auckland District Court on Tuesday to change his bail address after being released on Friday. I mean, are they over there on holiday or something, or have they emigrated there, or have they just gone there deliberately to just mess with the Kiwis like for lols? Any any of those things are fine by me. However, he was nowhere to be found, and a warrant was issued for his arrest. Uh, he was granted name suppression when he appeared in court on Thursday for allegedly trying to run down a woman with a car on the 13th. Is that the assault with a deadly weapon? Uh, the alleged assault took place on the same day a group of British travellers were filmed leaving beer bottles and piles of rubbish on one of the city's beach. Uh, Krista Kerno witnessed the incident unfold and allegedly the group of about 12 tourists turned violent when she asked them to clean, clean your mess as they uh, left the beach. Uh, she also alleged a car veered towards her as she attempted to take a picture of the vehicle's number plate. These, uh, they're out of control. Uh, they need to be stopped. Oh, I say tase them. Tase them repeatedly until they tod themselves, sling them in the van, and uh, ship them back on some sort of um, oldie worldy prisoner vessel, like the ones that would have shipped people over there in the first place. Uh, the British family made headlines across the world since arriving in New Zealand before Christmas. Uh, most of them finally left last weekend. All right, a lot of them have gone home. There's still just the real, the real renegades on the loose. Uh, they've been accused of trashing an apartment, leaving restaurants without paying, and stealing from shops. These, uh, it's really quite a collection of uh, low-key crimes, isn't it? <laughs> Images show members of the family standing in public, smoking and spitting and drinking Red Bull, while others carried six packs of beer. Only the Daily Mail could, uh, <laughs> could write this. Oh, people are scrawling. Um, slurs on their vehicles uh which is uh, nice uh the clan the clan okay that's nice okay interesting use of the word clan there uh who have lived in caravan parks across the east midlands in the uk became so notorious that a hire car they crashed and abandoned in auckland was stripped by souvenir hunters wow that's impressive do you think that it's gonna turn that all the bits are gonna turn up on on ebay God, they're becoming celebs. Right. Uh, a member of the group, Tina Maria Cash, 26, pleaded guilty in court to stealing Red Bull from Hamilton Service Station. <laughs> uh, a crime which carries 25 to life. Uh, she was ordered to pay $55 in reparation. Who are the uh, unruly British family rolling, uh, royal, riling New Zealand? The matriarch. The matriarch of the unruly clan being hunted by outraged Facebook vigilante is grandmother Barbara Doran, 55. Okay, the Daily Mail at doxing them. Mrs. Doran has told Daily Mail Australia that she is too scared to sleep at night, and yet you've continually printed her name. The family feel they are being tortured by the public and insist they have done nothing wrong, apart from obviously nicking Red Bull, uh, not paying for meals, uh, assault with a deadly weapon, thieving, just general thieving, and making a damned mess. She says, I'm very frightened, very, very frightened, honestly. Uh, the Red Bull thief, Tina Marie Cash, faced uh, New Zealand court last week and pleaded guilty to theft charges related uh, to the stolen Red Bull rope and sunglasses. Nick and rope. Where are they from? The family of... This is ridiculous. I, anyway, this is basically... It'd uh, be interesting to have updates on them. I Frankly, I hope they cause more chaos. I think uh, New Zealand has been getting on just fine recently, and it's about time they kind of shook things up. You know, they've got it too easy over there. They've got that lovely rolling countryside... You know, reasonable weather, close to Australia for, you know, I guess going over and having fake holidays. And, um, yeah, you can go and visit, I don't know, where they film Lord of the Rings or something. They've got it all going on. It's about time some Brits went over there and messed it up for them, disrupted the place. You know, maybe after they're gone, they'll realise how fucking lucky they are. Right, come on, let's get into Nick Clegg. Long-legged Cleggy Wegg. Accused of drinking the Facebook Kool-Aid, as he claims the social uh, network has stopped thousands of suicide. Sir Nick Clegg, Sir Long-Legged Cleggy Wegg, has claimed Facebook has saved thousands of lives by alerting authorities of users' displayed behaviour, which indicated they could be suicidal. Well, that would presumably be a good thing. However, an MP who has been a vocal critic of the social network, also accused the former Lib Dem leader of drinking the Kool-Aid, a phrase used to mock people who have unquestionably adopted the ideas of a cult. Is Facebook a cult? Could be. I mean, old Zuckerberg has been sacrificing goats. 
Yesterday, long-legged Clay, sorry, Sir Long-legged Cleggy Wag said Facebook is willing to change everything to curb posts about suicide following the death of a British teenager. Uh, the former Liberal Democrat, uh, Deputy Prime Minister, uh, former Deputy Prime Minister, now Facebook's Head of Global Affairs, said social media platforms have a profound responsibility to safeguard teenagers. This is correct. Uh, speaking in an interview to the BBC, so what exactly has he said here that's not good? Like, presumably he's saying that Facebook needs to be better at spotting potential suicide risks. That's a good thing, surely. Why are you, why are you condemning him, Jasper Hamill? It's <sighs> an outrage. Speaking in an interview to the BBC, he also admitted the way the firm pays tax is unsustainable. Yes, this is also true. Um, pay a little bit of tax, guys. At least uh, just a just a bit. It'd be like, oh, well, it's Facebook's turnover was like 28 billion and they paid in tax less than I do. <laughs> uh, but Damien Collins, chair of the House of Commons committee that's currently investigating Facebook, tweeted, Nick Clegg has clearly already drunk the Kool-Aid. All right, so slight conflict of interest there. If you're already investigating Facebook on something, you're probably not taking too much of a balanced look at it. He speaks about the serious legal and ethical obligations that Facebook has. It's a shame that Facebook has failed to meet these time and time again. This is all too little, too late. He only started working there about two weeks ago. Give him a chance. I mean, you know, he was the sort of like deputy prime minister or whatever for ages. And think about all the stuff that he got done. The stuff. Padgage. Padgage. I just walk in, play like the sickest sets. People just go nuts. Yeah, I, I, look, Sir Long-Legged Cleggy Wegg said over the last year, 3,500 people who were displaying behaviour liable to leading them to take their own lives on Facebook were saved by early responders being pointed to those intervening at the right time. That is surely a good thing. Um, and, you know, do, do, do more. Do more of it. Yeah, we're going to take a look at this from top to bottom and change everything we're doing, if necessary, to get it right. We'll sacrifice as many goats as it'll take. And we're currently updating Zuckerberg's software so he'll be able to work twice as hard for twice as long, but without recharging. Pretty cool. So Facebook will continue to work with charities. Uh, that's the Samaritans. We, they do say that in some instances it's better to keep some of the content, some of the distressing images up. Uh, that helps people. All right. Anyway, you know what? I'm... Um I'm going to give long-legged Cleggy Wegg the benefit of the doubt with this. I think he's a good boy. I think he's trying his best. Potentially his best not, isn't good enough. That's, of course, an option. But I think he's having a go, isn't he? He's trying. Someone's got to have a go. Might as well be long-legged Cleggy Wegg, man. Just getting it over there. I've actually got 14 Facebook friends now, so I'm becoming pretty popular in Silicon Valley. And we're all going to go and smoke a doobie around Zuckerberg's house and sacrifice a goat with uh, Jack Conti from Patreon. Uh, right, look, let's get into some of these shoe throwers. Uh, City Lights by Bop. It's off uh, some hospital thing, isn't it? You know, you know what I mean. <laughs> he did manage to betray everyone who voted for him, to be fair. <laughs> Wow, people in the chat really going in hard on Cleggy Wag. <laughs> Seems like a cool dude to me, I always thought. more chat about potentially getting a discord I'm more interested than I was potentially a discord and then just retiring Facebook altogether
Lovely bit of gear this, isn't it? Crash Test thinks that I should play some crazy dark sigh now and then to keep everyone on their toes. I promise you all this, I will never play Psytrance Trance on this show. Uh, I don't make a lot of promises, but that is one of them. And if I, uh, I, I, I might play it in jest, you know, perhaps to um, uh, jovially, jokingly, in a satirical fashion, but never seriously will I play Dark Sigh. <laughs> um, I just got a, a terrible image there uh, when saying dark side of side 20 doing something you definitely shouldn't do anyway I'll leave that one up to you if you want to uh, think about what that might be German doctor who killed lover by sprinkling cocaine on penis jailed for nine years okay so let's take a guess who is, who is the doctor and who died so because there's I mean potentially female doctor sprinkles cocaine on lover's penis uh he dies or other way around male doctor sprinkles it on his own penis and causes lo female lover or it could be male lover i don't know let's get into it dun, 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 dun. Boom. rebecca shepherd of the lad bible reports 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 uh german doctor has been jailed for nine years after causing the death of his lover when he sprinkled cocaine on his penis before she performed oral sex on him okay plot twist it was oral sex and um okay yes so it's a she he sprinkled it on his own penis uh dr andreas david uh need need a bitchler andreas David Niederbrichler. Niederbichler. Uh, oh, it is Bichler. Uh, uh, Niederbichler, 43, was found guilty of grievous, grievous bodily harm, which led to the death of a 38-year-old woman. This is a very rough way to go out. Uh, um, this is not, yeah, not cool, is it? Christ. Uh, court spokesman Christian Lofer said the accused was sentenced to nine years imprisonment for multiple... Oh, Jesus, man. Oh, it's just taken... A, it's, this is... Uh, no, this is this is not good. Um, I see. I assumed that it was the other... I mean, the other way around. I thought that it was the... Um, like it was some sort of weird... Uh, the person... The the pen the owner of the penis had died, and this is quite a, like obviously like it uh, could be an accident um, because the, it's a thing. It's a you know part of the so I hear part of the chemsex way. It's a bit of sprinkling of stuff here and there, um, but no, this just gets really just absolutely terrible. And um, I've had enough of it. No, I'm moving on to a story about the Pope. Pope Francis says social media is turning young people into social hermits. Uh, Pope Francis has called out social media for turning young people into social hermits. Uh, the 82-year-old head of the Catholic Church, uh, who is an absolute bastard by all accounts, also said that narcissism and society's division are amplified online, causing spirals of hatred. This is probably true. 
His Holiness was giving the message at the World Day of Social Communications 2019 and warned young people of the dangers of living their lives online. Um, and they should be out doing the Lord's work, uh, like refusing to tell Catholics that they can use contraception to stop the spread of STDs and save millions of lives every year. Um, but just not doing that, you absolute scumbag, Pope Francis. We need to recognise how social networks, on the one hand, help us to better connect, uh, rediscover and assist one another. Uh, but the other lend themselves to the manipulation of personal data aimed at obtaining political or economic advantages without due respect for the person and his or her rights. Uh, getting very, um, very political there, Popey. <clears throat> Mr. Popey, why, uh, why don't you stick to just a bit of, um, I don't know, keep it a bit more, bit more mythical, a bit more oldy-worldy weirdness no i don't know angels and stuff and you know drinking the blood of christ why do you drink the blood it's a th thing like you go and have your holy communion in that and you have the wine that represents why what, what what is this some kind of weird vampire cult like why are we drinking the blood of christ out why are we out here eating him and drinking his blood he's supposed to be a cool dude uh it was what's, what's the deal there popey eh Pope? Pope? Pageage. Yeah. Uh, young people are one of the most exposed to the illusion that is social that is the social web and can completely satisfy them on a rec that it can completely satisfy them on a recreational level. There is dangerous phenomenon of young people becoming social hermits who risk alienating themselves completely from society. Yeah, unlike what you might do by joining a fucking cult like the Catholic Church. The Pope is currently visi visiting Panama. For the Global World Youth Day Gathering. I'll leave that. During his message, he did suggest that the internet can be a good thing. Oh, right, okay, yeah, nice one, cheers. I think he just launched an app where you um, just sort of like, you can just hit a button and it prays for you automatically, something like that. For a quid, obviously, it's just making that Catholic Church never want to miss the opportunity and make a pound note. Uh, the, right ways, <laughs> the right way includes for dialogue, for encounter, for smiles, for memes. Expressions of tenderness. This is the network we want. A network created not to entrap, but to liberate. <clears throat> to protect a communion of people who are free. We need more dank memes. Send me your dankest memes. Oh, well, that's lovely stuff, you know. Glad to see he's taking a leaf out of old Elion's book. He's just out here for a few dank memes. Uh, right, look, what have we got? Hey, look, let's play this Eni bit that uh, did play possibly on Monday. Not sure. Lovely bit. Charlie Blex.
uh, yeah, sorry for the first 20 minutes of the uh, podcast with um, <clears throat> sorry with the podcast with MCID last night. Had a little cock up with the sound, but I'm going to re-upload the video uh, after the show with proper full audio for anyone that wants to uh, watch that again or for the first time. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, Chris, for coming up. They had a fucking laugh riot. Tell some funny ass stories. Side trance attracts bears, uh, it attracts enemy radar and sharks, it messes about. It always wants to sit at the captain's table. <laughs> mm-hmm. Little bit for you there, Sam. Mm-hmm. Yes, I must be some sort of wild anomaly. I d- dislike Psytrance intensely, but I do love Gabba. I mean, just a bit of it, like not for any more than sort of five minutes. The thing I'm not that keen about on Psytrance is I did actually like some of the sort of old stuff. I'm going back about 20 years here. Um, all right, okay, thanks, Bop. We've had you already. It's the plastic kick drum. I can't and uh, the sort of sort of routine. I'm not. Um, I ain't about that Psytrance life. And, uh, yeah. But, you know, look, each to their own. If you want to listen to Psytrance, it's just, just you can, yeah, there are many places you can listen to Psytrance. It's just this show isn't one of them. It's drum and bass and very occasionally bits of dubstep, sort of, you know, and drum, drum and bass associated genres. Drum and bass um, aligned, equivalent. No, not equivalent. <sighs> Forget it, man. Just forget it. I'm going home. No, I won't. All right, Elon Musk. His favorite tweet of all time is about himself. Great. Uh, And the tweet is SpaceX tagging in the original Elon Musk account saying, Elon Musk does not have a Twitter account. Please discontinue this account immediately. Your fraud has been reported. Elon, sorry, Elon, (laughs) retweeted this saying, still my favorite tweet of all time. Uh, Just digging a pet. It's got like a permit for a pit, big pit, and just dug a big pit. This is an entire news story based simply around one tweet of Elon Musk's where he says that his favorite tweet is an old tweet of SpaceX. Um, Jasper Hamill must undoubtedly be locked up in that windowless basement in the metro being lashed by some sort of dominatrix and a cat and up with a cat of nine tails more articles more pointless articles i can't i can't write them any faster just spell stuff wrong no need to no need to proofread any of them just copy and paste the same paragraph a few times oh i don't know what to write about i don't know what's elon tweeted recently something about his favorite tweet right cool i reckon you can get 300 words out of that Oh, okay, okay. Come on, Hamill, you piece of shit. Oh, I'm only on minimum wage. He deserves every lash he gets. Uh, yeah, now this is an entire story uh, fleshed out about how um, Elon's favourite tweet is an old tweet about him. Just went online, did a tweet, got Twitter out, opened up a Twitter account, did a tweet, couple of tweets. Called the guy a pedo in a tweet. Trying to take a lawsuit out against me. Uh, still think he's a pedo. <laughs> Just a bit of a bit of a pedo. Sticking a pit. It's got like a permit for a pit. Big pit. And just dug a big pit. Yeah, man. Uh, prete- uh, no, I don't pretentious foodie mum sounds annoying. All right, boy three found. After he went missing in the woods for days. Says he just hung out with a bear. 
Mate, what a little badass. He's just a cheeky renegade three-year-old. Uh, hundreds of people looked for Casey Hathaway after his disappearance for two days in North Carolina. I can't think of anything more terrifying than that. I mean, being the parent of a child that's gone missing in the... Uh, yeah, it doesn't bad thing. Anyway, a young boy was found after he went missing for two days in the woods, and he just said he hung out with a bear, <laughs> just hanging out, playing Xbox. Uh, Casey Hathaway has been found playing outside his great-grandmother's house with two children. Uh, oh, had been playing outside his grandmother's house with two children on Tuesday. The three-year-old then apparently wandered off into the woods of North Carolina, USA, as reported by the local news channel WITN. Hundreds of people, drones, helicopters, search dogs, enormous animals and uh, runaway rodeo cows were unable to find him, according to the news channel. Uh, uh, a crack team of male feminists was sent out. Oh, no, they weren't. Uh, the area began to experience freezing temperatures and heavy rain over the following days, with uh, many beginning to fear the worst of the boy. God, that's awful. A <laughs> uh, local woman... Uh, I lost a dog once for 18 hours. Undoubtedly the worst 18 hours of my life. I can't even begin to imagine what it would be like with a child. Local woman, uh, Lisa Fracker, had returned home on Thursday evening after getting involved in the search party. She went out to take her dog for a walk when she heard what she believed to be a child crying near near her home. Uh, Fracker took her dogs back inside before contacting an emergency responder to listen to the noises. Why not just go and find, go follow the noises? She told WITN, next thing I know, the emergency responder was coming back and telling me that, yes, he has heard something too. Uh, the next thing I know, everybody was running up there, and we heard that he was found. Emergency responder Captain Shane Greer discovered Casey to be tangled up in a thorn bush, uh, but said he not, did not appear to be seriously harmed. He said you could tell that he was very cold, so he immediately started warming him up. That's a good idea, isn't it? Once we got him in the vehicle. Uh, then, uh, excuse me, fuck off Stream Deck. We'll update you later. Uh, the more we warmed, warmed him up, uh, the, the better he seemed to get. <laughs> that, is, that is, wow, incredible hypothesis there for the uh, underlying medical condition of him being a bit chilly. And we found that after warming him up, he, he was no longer chilly. Uh, an ambulance rushed to the, the boy to the local hospital, but apart from cuts and bruises, he seemed to be fine. And particularly after he was no longer chilly. His aunt, uh, Bren Brenda Hathaway, posted on Facebook that he's been found. She said, Casey is healthy, smiling and talking. He said he hung out with a bear for two days. God sent him a friend to keep him safe. You reckon? I reckon that bear wanted to eat him but couldn't get him in the brambles. It's my hypothesis. Uh, she added that one of her nephews is a big fan of the Russian cartoon Masher and the Bear. Cool. Great. That's uh, good. He sounds delirious. All right, people are questioning the authenticity of the boy's statement. Helen, 57, two days ago. He sounds delirious, probably talking nonsense. All right, okay, great. Fake news, is it? That kid, that kid. <laughs> um, uh, she was walking her dog. Uh, oh, this is M. Pet Slayer. Right. Uh, she was walking her dog, heard these cries, and did not go to investigate. But when uh, when she knew there was a missing kid. Yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. Oh, my bad. She was being babysat by a bear. He hung out with a bear and lived to tell the tale. Is it me or does something not add up here? Hmm. Okay, so it's a conspiracy. Look into it. The X-Files. The X-Files. Uh, right, what else have we got? Ah, uh, no, that's the wrong thing. I mean, uh, yeah, get over here. Uh, the eight strangest things people have married, including a ghost and a roller coaster. All right, let's see how many we've covered on the show already. Do we have a full set? Ah, wow. Now, this takes us back. Um, uh, Nurul, uh, Nurul Hassan married a Tetris video game. I don't know if you'll remember, in the very, very first ever Coffee and Memes, which is over a year old, uh, the one where it was not a radio show, it was just me covering silly stories. I had no music in it. I covered this in the first one. A high-flying math student has revealed that she plans to marry her Tetris video game. She already married a calculator, I think, um, but they broke up. I seem to remember. Not 100% sure. Um, she says that she's been in a relationship with a calculator, yeah, that she named Pierre, and admits she also felt attracted to monorails, iPods, and a GPS system. <sighs> Putting it about a bit. <laughs> Uh, the 20-year-old, who likes to be known as Fractural Tetris uh, Hurricane. Yep. Go off, Fractral. God bless her. I hope she's happy. Uh, surrounds herself with Tetris-shaped uh, objects in her room. 
She now plans to marry the game where she, when she graduates from university in Florida. Uh, her friends and family were confused at first, but just, just happy for her now. It's nice that she's keeping out of trouble. Fair enough. Um, Pascal, yeah, we covered this uh, last last week, I believe. Uh, the woman who wants to marry her duvet. You know, good, I'd say. You know, as long as you're happy, fine by me. Uh, Amanda Sparrow Large, yep, Pirate Ghost. Yep, that's good. So far, three for three. <laughs> I'm pleased with this. Go on, got to have matey with the hologram. Ah, uh, no, this is one we've missed out on. Laura Messi married herself. They say if you can't love yourself, how can you love someone else? Italian fitness trainer Laura Messi uh, took this saying literally after celebrating a fairy tale wedding to herself. Messy ceremony was the full white frock, big cake, and bridesmaids affair. The only thing missing was the troublesome addition of a spouse to steal her thunder. Uh, she says that she decided two years ago, after a long-term relationship had ended, that if she was still single at 40, she'd just go and marry herself. Uh, that's the sort of thing you say as a laugh, and I guess she's sort of... Uh, people are like, yeah, you're going to marry yourself then. Uh, I was sort of only joking. Yeah, but you said it. You're supposed to be true to your word. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I uh, guess I'll try and book a venue uh mrs uh, ms mary messi's ma why is it not mrs she's married come on <laughs> do it properly uh messi's marriage to herself holds no legal weight oh okay fair enough uh, which at least means that if she does want to start dating again she won't have to sue herself for divorce reasonable ah this oh this i've not heard of oh wow yeah okay cool amanda liberty uh, has married a chandelier good for amanda uh, Amanda from Leeds has filled her home with 25 hanging lamps after spending hundreds of pounds on some of her favourites. The 33-year-old has embarked on an open relationship with chandeliers and is engaged to a 28-inch wide light called Lumerie after buying it on eBay. Nice. <laughs> she says it was love at first sight after spending 400 quid on the antique from Germany. Uh, Lumerie is regularly showered with kisses and cuddles. There is a picture of her kissing it. Sort of a bit terrifying, but, you know, again, as long as she's happy and it's not hurting anyone else, crack on. She prefers to spend her nights cuddled up to Jewel, a portable chandelier. Didn't realise such a thing existed. That she happily tucks into bed with her. All right, so, yeah, open relationship. Probably smart, isn't it? Amanda identifies herself as objectum sexual, which means she is attracted to objects. And first fell in love with a drum kit at 14. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Uh, and later the Statue of Liberty before changing her surname. Yes, I remember that. Okay, so you married the Statue of Liberty. I didn't. Re I don't remember the Statue of Liberty consenting to that. All I'm saying. Uh, okay, Amanda Rogers, dog, married a dog. Uh, Sheba. Uh, this is uh, unaware of. So you would have, uh, this was a while ago. Dog owner Amanda Rogers took her puppy, her puppy love, to extreme lengths when she decided to marry her pet pooch Sheba in August. 2012. Mrs. Rogers from South London married a human husband 20 years ago, but the union was short-lived. Uh, from time, so this time she decided a different approach, and she went for walkies down the aisle uh, in Split, Croatia, in front of 200 guests. Uh, that dog, <laughs> bless him. <laughs> Uh, it's so funny when you do do things like this with uh, with pets because they've just, they've got no idea what's going on. They're just, they're like, they are the ultimate straight man. They're just like, oh yeah, well, we're going for a walk on holiday, are we? Oh, going for a walk. Oh, there's lots of people here. Oh, I'm getting a lot of attention. This is pretty cool. Oh, another biscuit. Thanks very much. What do you mean I'm married? What's happened here? Uh, Sal9000 married a computer game character. Uh, Japanese groom married his fantasy bride, literally. Okay, so this is a diff different Japanese chap. Uh, he's married a computer game character in appears some sort of um, one of those flip up Game Boy type routines. Japanese groom married his fantasy bride, literally. The man who goes under the alias Sal 9000, last one, Sal, uh, went one better than marrying an inanimate object when he wed an imaginary one. How dare you? He married a computer game character named uh, Nenny uh, Enegasaki. Uh, from the Nintendo DS virtual dating game, Love Plus, in his fantasy wedding in November 2009. Wow, he was really ahead of the curve with this. Uh, he's a real trendsetter. He's a sort of, I guess, he, he was marrying inanimate objects before it was cool. Uh, we're not sure he has quite mastered the concept of internet dating. Ah, oh, bless him, as long as he's happy. <laughs> uh, Amy Wolf, Fairground Ride. 
Uh, it would be assumed that wedding, wedding inanimate objects would be slightly more stress-free, but this woman ended up having a bit of a rollercoaster relationship with her lover. <laughs> Hilarious. Every marriage has its ups and downs, but Amy Wolf from New York can expect more than most after tying the knot with a fairground ride. Incredibly, the ride, called 1001 Nacht in Pennsylvania, was not Amy's first inanimate love. She has previously been in relationships with model spaceships, the Twin Towers, and a banister. <laughs> God bless them. I say, best of luck to them. I hope they're happy. Uh, I, I want invites to these weddings. I, I can think of nothing more, that I, nothing that I would enjoy more than going to a wedding of a man marrying a hologram or a woman marrying a roller coaster. I'll get pissed up. I'll do a speech if they want. You know, I, I, I'm not, not, I wouldn't be there to take the piss. I'd be there to have a good time. They sound like they're up for a laugh, uh, I presume. Right, look, let's play this uh, Ring Shifter remix again. It's a hot bit of gear. I don't see anything nosing its way in to beat it for Shoe Throw of the Week, to be honest. But, two days left, still to play for. Yeah, pretty naughty. I say really it's a naughty bit of gear it is proper rascal I feel it's potential to not only throw the shoes but actually to remove the socks as well and hurl them scrunch them up into a ball and just have at it bit of a sock shifter Yeah, culprit yeah. remix of uh, Ring Shifter. Nice bit of gear. Uh, originally by the Murphys. Right, time traveller from 2030. Claims he knows what's happened. No, no, blah, blah, blah. Steady what? job. Uh, time traveller from 2030. Claims he knows what happens to the UK after Brexit. See, second time, got it. Claire Reed of the Lab Bible. Reports, 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 reports. 
Uh, now, I feel like we might have covered this dude before, but perhaps he's got a little bit of, little bit of more info. Uh, okay. All right. Yep. Yeah, no, a little bit, little bit of extra, extra nuggets for you. A little bit of news nuggets. Um, I'm not sure if Theresa May has time to troll weird YouTube uh, channels, but if she does, she may be disheartened to know that all the worrying, stressing she's doing over Brexit is for nothing. Why, you ask? Because a time traveller has come forward to say that the UK will rejoin the EU in 11 years. Okay. Uh, Noah, who claims to be a time traveller from the 2030, has claimed in a new video uh, to let us all know that what's about to happen in the coming years. So that's nice of him. He begins with a clip telling us that uh, he comes back to tell us the truth, and we can assume this is 100% legit. Of course, why would he lie? Uh, he is, of course, on Apex TV, who are known for all of this sort of bullshit. Now it says, I've come back to tell you guys the truth, and everything there is to know about the future. There is a lot for me to say. First thing, the, uh, the United Kingdom actually comes back to the European Union, right? The Brexiteers won't be happy about these predictions, uh, Noah, except to find yourself barred from every Weatherspoons. Uh, he continued, the thing about the European Union in the future is that all the countries in the EU actually converge together into one giant country. Uh, the UK kind of acts like a district within the giant country. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I am telling the truth, actually. I'm not lying to you guys when I say this. The European Union actually becomes one giant country. Okay, he went on to explain that in the not so distant future, there will also be a new global currency, which of course will replace both the pound and the euro, among others. Uh, bad news for anyone working in the bureau de change. I'm trying to run a high class bureau de change here, not some two bit punch and Judy show on, on the beach at Margate. And now there's also a stark warning about climate change, explaining that it will significantly change the temperature in the UK and then it will hit third world countries the hardest. He added, global warming is very bad. Uh, it's a very bad thing that we will have. I don't know what to tell you guys. You need to change something right now if you don't want the temperature and everything to change. Uh, I don't believe that he's from the future. I just, um, I don't believe it. You know, I've got no evidence, I've got no evidence to, to the, con you know, he says he's from the future. I, can't, I guess I can't prove that he's not, but I'm, I'm going to take the position that he's not, you know, even even though I can't, you know, necessarily prove it with facts. Facts seem to mean a little bit less than they used to in this sort of post-truth era we're in. But I'm going to stake out my position. I'm prepared for this to be the hill that I die on. Noah is a liar. <laughs> he has not been to the future. He's not from the future. He has nothing to do with the future other than that he is the master of his own destiny. I don't believe what he's saying. I think it's very unlikely. I don't know what circumstances would have to be true for the EU to turn into one giant country, the world to adopt a, you know, a single currency. The climate change bit, yeah, th that's reasonably believable. But uh, they'll never take our sovereignty, will they, Snips? Never. Brexit means Brexit. Right, okay, see, so there you go. There you have it. I mean, I'm more inclined to believe Wesley Snips on his thoughts about post-Brexit Europe than I am Noah, who has his face blurred out on Apex TV. If you're so hard, mate, if you're so cool, if you're telling the truth, yeah, why you got your face blurred out? Oh, what, so the Illuminati don't get you? So the CIA don't come and stick a probe up your ass. If you're so tough, mate, Noah, fucking time-travelling Noah from 2030, if you're so hard, yeah, why don't you come and fight me in a car park? Eh? Right, the car park by the... Uh, by the Toby Carvery in with Dean, yeah? There's a big old car park there. I'll fight you there. Uh, name your rule set. Name your rule set. Uh, my only stipulation is that it's bare-chested and bare-knuckle. You know, you can uh, if you want to say, like, no biting or anything, fine, whatever. If you want to say biting, again, I'm fine with that. But you and me, Noah, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, knuckle up, all right? That's, I'm laying it down there. No, Noah the liar. Noah the liar from 2030. Fucking sing, single country, bloody single world currency, my tits. <laughs> right, okay, good. So play us out. Uh, clacks, static. Let's do it. Noah. Padgett. Yeah.
Some good suggestions in the chat to settle political debate with a dance off. That makes a lot of sense. I, w I would be pro that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that culprit remix is half time drum and bass rather than dubstep. Always fun to argue about genres though. It's dubstep appropriation. just time to shout out the VIP list. A wonderful bunch of humans that are supporting Threshold and Coffee and Memes on Patreon. If you want your name on this list, shout it out at the end of every show. Head on over to our Patreon page. You can either find it at support the station on the website, threshold.fm, get support the station, or there is a link in the YouTube video description. And if you support for $10 a month or more, you get your name on this list. Along the, alongside Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonklaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Mosson, Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kaczynski, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Cole Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patterson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Buller, Zara Pickle, Jerome Van Thunderbutt, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Ansar, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Chode Ryder, Andrew Heichelbeck, John Finneson, the BDR crew, Peter Blatchford, Austin Grief Cooper, Kennedy Lightfield, Ryan Glazer, James Parry, Dave Thompson, Hendo Bartendo, Lady Squiffington, Liam the Menace Underwood, Dan fucking Morris, a guy with no STDs, Justin Mercer, and Ames MC. Thank you very much to all of you for your patronage. Very kind of you. Apparently, for some part, latter part of the show, it's not been broadcasting on Threshold. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm in quite after last night's slight irritation with the beginning segment of the podcast with Chris and the sound there and little mishaps like this. I definitely do need some sort of engineer assistant type. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully if we can get, if I can get the money together, which is what I'm aiming to do at the moment through various means uh, to pay someone uh, above minimum wage uh, for a part-time position here, would be sort of nine till midday, I guess, weekday mornings, and then for the occasional later podcasts, if you have audio editing skills, streaming skills, video editing skills, computer hacking skills, nunchuck skills, then, and you would be interested in this, get in touch, will at threshold.fm, probably be something starting in March, I estimate. Uh, yeah, if you know anyone, just email me and tell me why you would be crazy enough to want such a position, will at threshold.fm. All right, look, I will be back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., more coffee, more memes, more lobsters, more... Package. <sighs> I don't know, it's starting to grate a little bit now, that uh, that sample. But I will see you then. Uh, I love you all. You're all honest, decent, God-fearing folk. 
And I wish you nothing but the best. So, goodbye. I love you.